Hey, it's Matt here, and today I'm going to show you how to connect Cursor and Replit. This is something we've seen quite a bit of demand for, uh, and I'd like to give a big shout out to one of our users on X who shared a tutorial on how to do exactly this last week, and that largely inspired the tutorial I'm about to show you. Um, but I'm going to go a bit beyond connecting these two technologies. I'm going to talk about why this is important. I'm going to talk about the types of development flows it enables. And lastly, I'm going to share some tips and tricks that I've discovered along the way that might help you make the most out of this process. Um, and one thing I want to call out before we jump in is that this is not exclusive to Cursor or VS Code for that matter. This is enabled in any editor that supports connecting through SSH. Um, and that also means any terminal. That's right, you can open any terminal you want and connect to your REPL. So I don't want to keep you waiting. Let's jump right into it. We're going to talk through the process step by step. So we'll get started by creating a REPL. And you're probably familiar with the REPLit homepage. We're going to create a blank REPL and we're going to call it SSH Tutorial. Um, of course, this will work with any REPL. Uh, it doesn't matter what languages you use. We'll talk a lot about configuration in this video and exactly what's going on. Um, but this is the default page. We're going to get started by opening a new tab. And we have this SSH tab here. Um, and so you can see we've actually added buttons for one-click connections to VS Code or Cursor. There's actually a little bit of setup we have to do before we click these buttons. So first, I'm going to head to the keys uh, pane. And I already have a key but I'm gonna delete that one. Now we're gonna start from scratch. I also removed all the files on my computer uh, that configure this connection. Um, so there shouldn't be any worries there that uh, we're missing something. So I'm gonna create a new key. We're gonna add a label. The label should um, identify ideally the device you're connecting from. Uh, so Matt's MVP, MacBook Pro. Um, and then I'm gonna need to generate an SSH key. Uh, and so we have some guidance here on how to generate that. I'm on a Mac, and this is how you generate the key on the Mac. I believe it's the same for other devices, um, but we also have pages in our documentation, which will be linked in this video, um, where you can read more in-depth instructions or really geek out on this stuff. But if you've ever configured a GitHub repository or configured Git to connect to your local machine, you've probably done something pretty similar. Um, so that is the same with this process. So now I'm gonna head over to cursor and I'm gonna open a new terminal. And in this terminal, I'm just gonna paste, actually let's make this a little bit bigger. In this terminal, I'm gonna paste and run that command. Now I'm gonna get a key. This is sensitive, so don't really go sharing this with people, kind of like I'm doing on this video right now. Um, but I promise you, this will be deleted by the time you, uh, you see this video. Uh, so I'm gonna paste this into my SSH key and I'm gonna click add key. Now, an important point is that this is account level, which means that doing this process, like you really only have to go through this process, uh, the process of creating a key and linking that key once for your entire account. From now on, I'll be able to connect to any REPL that is under my account. Um, so that's nice. And there's actually just one more step we're gonna have to do here. So this is all available in our documentation. If you're on a uh, Windows or Linux machine, things might be a bit different. So I'd check those out. But on a Mac, um, I'm gonna go to .ssh, which is the root uh, folder for my SSH files. Um, we'll list the files there. And then I'm just gonna nano into this config. Uh, and that's kind of because I'm lazy and I don't wanna edit this file with a text editor, but I'm gonna paste the following configuration. And that's gonna add replit uh, dot dev um, as the identity for this file. Um, and then that's will allow us to engage with cursor uh, in the browser. So I'm going to hit control X, Y, enter to write that, clear that out, and we should be good to go. So now really all we have to do is click launch cursor and we're going to hit open and you're going to see in cursor um, some warnings, some messages like this looks a little scary, but really it's just saying, hey, replit.dev is reaching out and it has this fingerprint. Um, these are the hosts and URLs things are coming from. We configured all this, we initiated this connection. There's nothing to worry about. We're gonna click continue. Uh, and you're gonna see in the bottom right, you're gonna see on the left, uh, VS Code is downloading some things, right? Cursor is built on VS Code and configuring SSH. Really only takes a few seconds uh, until you have uh, a directory listed. Um, and again, we get the contents of our REPL. So I really want to drive home like what is happening. We have our REPL file system uh, accessible now through this connection. And um, this is huge, right? Because it means that we get access to all the features of Cursor and everything I'm doing here, you know, if I'm if I type LS, that's actually going up to my remote, going up to my REPL, executing that command and returning it to me. 
Um, now, something we worked pretty hard on uh, for the last couple of days, um, something I, I'm really uh, excited about, the engineering team was really excited about, was enabling our tools over SSH. So the thing that's great about Replit is that we're developing in our deployment environment, right? This is a remote environment and you know it, it comes with its own compute power. You can see that if you click the REPL resources, right? So this REPL has a four uh, core CPU with eight gigs of RAM. If I wanted to change that and make it 16 cores with 32 gigs of RAM, I could do that. And now I'm developing on a really high powered machine, right? And so when I execute these commands, they're gonna be executed in a remote environment on a machine with a lot of power. Um, and that's really great. The other thing that we get, the other kind of unlock here, is that we get access to Replit's tools for installing and managing both languages and frameworks. So in the shell, remember this is a blank REPL. If I type NPM, um, NPM is not installed, but Replit knows that and it's gonna prompt us over SSH if I want to install NPM. So I'm gonna hit Y. Uh, and now the environment's been updated, it reloaded the shell. And if I type in NPM, um, that's the command, right, that I would get for running an npm command. So we just installed node and through this experience it's pretty much identical to installing it on your local machine or having it accessible from this directory. Except I didn't have to go through the whole headache of installing nvm and configuring a version uh, and figuring out what I'm doing right and figuring out how to install it uh, for my operating system and all that. Um, so this is really powerful right and if we wanted python here um, we could install python. And now we have Python 3.10 ex installed. Uh, and whoops, exit. And if we wanted Python 3.12 installed, right, I could go to dot replit, change this to 3.12, save that. Um, I believe I have to refresh. There you see environment rebuilding in the background. Now if I type Python, whoops, I might have to reload this one more time. Now I have Python 3.12. So, I really don't know a simpler process for installing Python other than what I just showed you. So that's great, right? I have this remote environment that I'm connected to. It's running in the cloud. Why does that matter? Well, it matters because now I can use all of the great features that I love about Cursor, all the great things that I love about my local development environment to build in an environment that I know will be the same as what I'm going to deploy. If you've ever built with Vercel, if you've built with Cloudflare or Railway or any of these other tools, they're really great, but you can create something that works on your machine push it you know, to a repo, to build, to deploy, whatever, and it doesn't work. And it's kind of complicated, right? So the process I'm gonna show you here is really simple and really straightforward. Um, I'm actually gonna use cursor, and uh, in this directory, I'm gonna say, um, create a Vite React project um, with TypeScript. And this is using cursor's terminal um, editor, and so it knows the command, and this is gonna, uh, create that, um, whoops, create that application using uh, the create uh, vite command. And so you can now see I have my React app. I'm gonna CD into my React app and I'm gonna ask it to recursively move all these files up one directory just so I have them in the root directory. And I find you often has to have to ask for dot files too. Otherwise, it'll write a command. Uh, whoops, I didn't actually type that in the uh, chat prompt. Um, otherwise, it'll uh, it'll just run the command without moving those like typically secrets files up. Um, so I run that. Now all the files that were in that directory are up one directory. I can uh, delete that folder, um, deleted, and then I can cd dot dot to move up ls, make sure we have all the files there. I can run uh, npm uh, install to install the packages in package.json. Again, these are being installed to the REPL, not necessarily my local workspace. And now you're probably saying, okay, cool. Um, so you did this, you kind of created a project. What's gonna happen when you click run, right? Because typically when you click run in a REPL, it's running on the REPL itself. And that's where you get that web view. You have access to like see what you're running. Well, let's take a look at what happens. npm run dev. Um, you're gonna see, we get a notification that uh, there's a port available. So you can open that like in your browser or you can preview it in the editor. I'll preview it in the editor. Let's see what we got. We have a basic Vite React project. This is the boilerplate when you create a new project. And so this says localhost 5173, that is relative to the REPL. So this is actually running on a REPL in the cloud. We're accessing it in 
our browser um, or in the editor here, really. And it comes with all the great features that you would expect, right? So um, the React, if I did like a, a emoji here, give it a little wave. Um, we're going to get hot reloading. So again, this is going to the REPL back to our, uh, our local machine and previewing in the browser. Um, and yeah, this is a really great development flow. And so you could imagine, right, uh, if I did like a new chat here in cursor and I said, write me a beautiful to do application, um, with nice, uh, drop shadow and animation. Right, this is all of the great stuff about uh, cursor that everybody loves is like kind of the code generation. Granted, we also do have code generation with Claude uh, directly in the REPL, um, but if I'm showing you a sample cursor flow, right, I'm writing this app, um, it's gonna give us all the code. I'm gonna drop that in here. Now, that doesn't look very good, but that's because we also have some CSS. We'll drop the CSS in, looks much better. Um, and it doesn't have any external libraries, right? That was a one-shot prompt. We didn't have to install any component libraries. But for like five seconds, right, now I have this application. Um, again, uh, if you haven't built and deployed on Replit before, you might be saying, okay, well, you know, that's great. Now we're doing the same thing, but it's virtualized, right? It's running in some container. Um, so imagine uh, installing complex dependencies. So let's take this and deploy it, right? Let's make it live on the internet. Um, if I head on over to Repl here and I create a new tab, I'll go to deployments. Um, since this is a V app, it would be a static deployment. I'll set that deployment up. SSH tutorial mat, that looks fine to me. Uh, v apps build to the disk directory. So when you're creating a static app, it's just a collection of HTML files. And so you'd run npm run build to compile those HTML files. And those will go to dist. And then we're going to deploy that disk directory with Replit's static deployments. And that's typically how you deploy um, this type of application. Some types of next applications, if they don't have a server or they don't have a backend, um, and quite a few other, you know, there's some Python static frameworks that are starting to, to be popular um, as well. So, right, the flow is I'm connecting to this external environment, I'm installing packages, I'm configuring everything in the cloud, um, and then I'm building. And it actually looks like we got an error. So, uh, Replit has uh, deployment repair. Uh, it automates um, kind of some of the errors that you might see in deployment. So it's saying React is declared, but it's never read in source app.tsx. So let's take a look. So this is probably a TypeScript thing, right? Where like you can't just like declare it. We can actually run that in uh, Replit. Take a look. So if you don't see output, you typically have to check the networking tool and make sure it's uh, open on port 80. Um, we can do that really quickly. Okay, so there's some differences, right, with like dark mode and the CSS, we won't get into that. Uh, but now we have something that works. Um, we can go back to deployments. Uh, we can uh, click redeploy. And now this is going to recompile again, like AI is assisting us throughout this entire process. So. Uh, in that sense, this development flow looks a lot more like being a product manager than somebody writing code, right? I kind of had an idea in my head of what I wanted to build. Uh, I tried to build it. Cursor helped me build it. Replit helped me uh, fix the deployment, fix a little bit a bug that was maybe introduced by Sonnet. And now we have something that's deployed. So if I click this link, um, I get my to-do app. This is on its own website. This is deployed live. Um, you can imagine doing this with something quite a bit more complex. I have a lot of tutorials on how to do those sorts of things. So I'd recommend checking those out. Uh, connecting through SSH to something like Cursor enables these really advanced development flows, um, not just because uh, we get access to all of Cursor's tools and features, but because we're developing in our deployment environment. Um, and what that means is that you'll never have dependencies that are out of sync because the environments are the same. Uh, and that development and deployment parity uh, if you will, is really important um, for creating things fast, for creating prototypes, uh, but also for developing applications that you know are easy to build and troubleshoot. Um, and so this is a really great setup. I'd highly recommend checking this one out and I'd highly recommend comparing it to other deployment providers. I found this to be one of the slickest flows, um, especially when I looked at things like Cloudflare, Vercel, Railway, etc. cetera. Uh, so give this one a shot. I think it's kind of next level <laughs> in my opinion, but hey, I'm biased. Uh, again, I'm Matt with Replit. This has been connecting to a REPL with SSH. Um, until next time, peace.